Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Applied Multivariate Analysis. And we're in Chapter 3 of this playlist, which I'm calling Characterizing Multivariate Data. And let's just jump right to our topic for today, which is bivariate mean vector. So let y be a random vector of two variables. And let y1, y2 to yn are the n observation vectors, which are measured from a sample of n units or subjects or objects. So the ith observation vector, call it yi, so that's the ith person, ith unit, is this. It, it's a column vector of two components because we're in bivariate, which means two. So the first index, i, is the subject, right? And the second component, the second index, I mean, one is that's the first variable, two, that's the second variable. Now the data matrix in a bivariate sample is an n by two matrix, right? There's n observations and there's two variables. And you can think of it like generically as, as this. So y1 transpose, that's the first observation and there's two components, second observation, two components. Notice that the index are the same on each row because each row represents a person or a, or a subject and each column represents a variable, right? So this is the first variable, the second variable. Now, there's some built-in data sets in R that we're going to make use of in these videos. The first one is cars, and to illustrate it, um, the description is the data give the speed of cars and the distances taken to stop. And one note is that the data were recorded in the 1920s. So you, data cars, that attaches the data set, you know, in, into R. Now STR is the structure of cars, so it kind of prints out a summary. So it's a data frame, 50 observations, two variables. First variable is speed, second is distance, and uh, they're numeric, and they give a brief, you know, list of the values. You can type head cars, cars is the, the data frame, and it prints the first six rows of the data frame. If you type summary cars, then it goes variable by variable and provides a summary, you know, the mean, the quartiles, the mean, Let's plot the data. We're not going to review the code necessarily, but it looks like this. So, you know, the speed is on the x-axis, stopping distance is on the y. We plot it, and, and even we could plot a, you know, a simple linear regression line, which that will play a part when we look at covariance. I'm foreshadowing there. So the population mean vector is this. Often called the expected value of y. It's the same thing. Population mean vector, expected value of y. So the expected value of this vector, which is two by one, remember it's a random vector, bivariate, random bivariate vector, has two components. So this is thought of as y1, y2. And when you take the expected value, which it goes into each component, and then the expected value of y1 is whatever that population mean is for that first variable. So mu1 is the first component and mu2 is the second component. But remember in multivariate analysis we think of that as a vector. So we'll just call it mu and it's bold which means it's a vector. Now the sample mean vector is this. So it's, it's also a vector. It's a two by one vector. It's bold with the, the ventulum above the the bar, or the you know the bar above the y, and it it's a two by one vector, and the first component is the sample mean from variable one, and component two is the sample mean for variable two, and as you know that it's just this. So notice the index is i; it's the first index. So we're summing over each subject or each unit. And each time it's the first variable, we just add them up, divide by n. And then we do the similar for the second component. But one note here is look at this constant, 1 over n, in each component. We can factor that out, right, and just bring it out front. Because when there's a scalar times a vector, it's multiplied by each component. So we can think of it like this. 
Now, each of these sums, we can just write out, right? Y11, Y21, etc. And then the second component. But this looks like a matrix product. So here we have our data, but this is the one, the one vector, J. If we were to multiply this times this uh, row, it adds them up. And then we'd have to multiply this times that second row, and it adds them up. But what this is notationally is, you know, 1 over n. And this is actually the transpose of the y vector, or the data matrix, and then times j. So if we look at this, the y transpose, and we go back here. So here it is. So this is the data matrix, right? Now, if we, if we look at this first column and then this second column, when we transpose it, this first column becomes the first row, and this column becomes the second row. And that's exactly what we have right here. It's Y transpose, you know, times J, which is a vector of ones. Now, an interesting property that the expected value of the sample mean vector which is this, you know, it's the mean of each component. It goes into each component, and then the sample or the expected value of, you know, the, the sample mean of variable one is just the mean of variable one, and the expected value of Y2 is the, you know, the mean of the second component, which is just the mean vector. So this is saying that the sample mean vector is unbiased for the population mean vector. Now, a very quick illustration of how to calculate this on, in R. So first we create a, a vector of ones, rep one, however many rows there are in car, right? We know there's 50, so it's going to put 50 ones into J. And what you do is you take the transpose of our data matrix times J. And look what it prints out, 15.4, 42.97. But if we were just to take the column means of cars, right, then it puts, but notice it's the same, right? This is matrix form. This is just taking the mean of each column. Okay. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.